that? I hope we say good morning. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> welcome to First Baptist Church and welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Um, one thing we're going to do a little different this year, after the service is done, as a continuation of our service, if you wish to join us, we're going to carpool and gather over at the Empire Crossing Retirement Hall. And they've arranged for us to be able to stand on their patio outside and sing Christmas carols into their dining room to the residents there. And so if you want to carol with us when the service is done, um, feel free to join us. If you need directions how to get there, uh, ask somebody who's been in for over a <laughs> that you know. But uh, yeah, you're more than welcome to join us for that. And let's uh, maybe begin our service in prayer. Father, we thank you so much that we can come here today and uh, just lay aside the busyness of the Christmas season and pause for this hour and to focus on you, to focus on your goodness and your gift of your Son at Christmas. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, speak to us, that we would sense your presence here, that we would sense your, your drawing us to yourself that you would um, just make this time very special. Help us, Lord, to, to connect with what Christmas is all about, even in this hour. Thank you, Lord, that your Spirit speaks to us, and I uh, just pray that you would do that this time. We give this time to you, and ask, Lord, that you would just be very real and very present in our hearts and lives this time. We pray for those who might be missing someone very special this Christmas. And this is a difficult time. So we ask, Lord, for your comfort and for your touch and for your strength. And we ask you in Jesus' name. Well, remember that we will read scripture, so when it's your turn to do it, just come on up here and read your scripture. Uh, Mike's going to read his on the PowerPoint. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made, that had been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness. <clears throat> Darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world was made. Through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God.
will sing along with me. I know it's awkward singing in mass, but uh, sing along as we, as we sing the story of Christ come to earth for us. We begin with, O come, O come, in the name of God.
<laughs> and this one is called Mary Visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready to hurry to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby left in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb left for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. Mary's song. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. His mercy extends to those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with His arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped His servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever just as he promised to our ancestors. Thank you.
comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of, of the entire Roman world. And this was the first census that took place while Herodias was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of Nehemiah David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in the manger, because there was no room for them in the end.
2, verses 8 to 20, the shepherds and the angels. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, and I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in the manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where, where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what has been written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful, a careful search of the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, of incense, and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Somebody's favorite Christmas story, or somebody's favorite reader. <laughs> Sometimes we approach Christmas like wise men, thinking that we sort of got some things figured out and we understand what it's all about. But I think over and over again throughout his ministry, Jesus reminded people that we needed to approach the things that he was teaching and showing us not as wise men, but as children. Because we have so very much sometimes to unlearn and to relearn before we can really begin life. Let me see. 
always been, and things happen pretty much as they always have. The Jewish people were still living under Roman rule. They had a measure of freedom, yes, but they were not self-governing. They did not have the right as a society, they did not have the right as a people to make all decisions for themselves. The Romans left the religious matters, for the most part, up to the Jewish religious leaders. And they had freedom of religion, as long as it didn't interfere with the affairs of state, as long as it didn't interfere with the peace of the, the territory. If in everything else, the Romans called the shots as was demonstrated by the thousands of Jewish people who were forced to return to their place of birth to be counted in a Roman census so that they could pay Roman taxes. For generations, the Jews had put their faith in the ancient prophecies of the coming of the Messiah, the Deliverer, the one who would come and bring freedom to his people. For centuries, the Jews understood that the idea of the Messiah had had spiritual implications, had societal implications, had political implications. But lately, living under Roman rule, the spiritual implications began to take more of a back burner, and they were more concerned with the societal and the political side of the Messiah. They looked to a Messiah who would come bring freedom from these Roman rulers. Living in the day before, they had certain expectations of what Messiah was going to do and what Messiah was going to be. But many of them had become quite discouraged. Four hundred years of silence had passed, and there was little or no word of direction from any of the prophets. Living in the day before was a time of great longing, of patient waiting, of hoping and praying for something dramatic to happen that would, would cause everything to change. But as each day passed and nothing changed, discouragement began to set in. The hopes and dreams of all the years were growing dim, and each day just morphed into the next one, unchanging and routine. Life as it had always been simply marched along from day to day with no sign of change and no sign of deliverance in sight. But then, he came. It was the day before, and like most days that are the day before, things were happening pretty much as they had always happened. The small group of shepherds ventured out onto the hillside with the flock of sheep that they had been given charge of. Being a shepherd was by no means a glamorous job. In fact, it was probably one of the lowest jobs you could have on the society's ladder of success. It took little or no education to be a shepherd. A shepherd could not get the odor of smelly sheep out of his clothes and off of his skin no matter how hard he tried. Shepherds were looked down upon in society, viewed as just a little bit above common thieves in the eyes of the populace. And like all humans, shepherds had hopes, shepherds had dreams, Many of them no doubt believed that, yeah, they could be better than this. They could aspire to something greater in life if, if only they had the chance. But so few of them had been given the chance. They either lacked the qualifications to do anything else but shepherding, or, or they were stuck doing this job in order to provide for their families. It was discouraging, trudging every day to a dead end job that earned little or no respect. I mean, the camaraderie of other shepherds, that was nice, but, but overall the job was a tedious one. Only rarely offering any kind of excitement. Excitement which a shepherd would rather not have because the coming of that excitement usually meant trouble. Living in the day before was routine and boring, with little sense of fulfillment and purpose. There was nothing special about the life shepherd, and there never would be. But then, he came. Living in the day before was a little, little different from Mary and Joseph. Their lives had changed dramatically in the previous nine months, and they knew that there would very soon be a day that actually would be the day, and not simply the day before. But living in the day before right now, 
this time brought Mary and Joseph cause for apprehension, cause for worry, concern, even cause for fear. For in this day before, there was a, a very immediate matter of trying to find lodging for the night, a place where the young couple and their very soon-to-be-born child could lay their head in safety for the night. They just completed a long and arduous journey that probably should not have been undertaken in Mary's condition, but they had no choice. The Romans, remember? And now, no doubt, anxiety was setting in as they realized that they might very well have to spend the night on the streets. But God had been merciful and faithful in preparing Mary and Joseph for the road ahead in their lives. Angels had appeared to both of them, separately and independently, to spell out God's plan for their lives and, and how they would play a role in bringing the Messiah, the Son of God, into the world. And though Mary and Joseph were, were remarkable people, remarkable young people with great faith, they still had no doubt had these moments of fear and worry. Moments where they had to endure the gossip of, of the neighbors and the townspeople when Mary became pregnant, and the shunning of family and friends. Moments like all parents have where they wondered how they would financially support this child. Moments like all first-time parents have where they wonder, have we got what it takes to raise this child? Moments like no other parent in history has had where they wonder if they had what it took to raise the Son of God. But then, He came. Everyone living in the day before had questions. The Jews asked why God wasn't delivering them, why they had to live without their full freedom, why God wasn't fulfilling his promises. The shepherds asked why there wasn't more to life than what they were experiencing, why they were so rejected by their, their countrymen, why nothing changed from that day to day. Mary and Joseph asked, why, why us? Why were they chosen? Why were they in the situation that night, which was really no place to have a baby? How were they going to manage fulfilling the responsibilities of, of raising a child, let alone raising the Son of God? And in answer to all of these questions, God came. He didn't respond to their questions, both spoken and unspoken, with an answer. He responded with himself. He responded by being Emmanuel, God with us. Everything changed the day after the day before. Not because all their questions were answered. Many of those questions still remain. Many of their situations remain unchanged. The fact of the matter is that everything changed the day after the day before because God had given Itself. And today, on this day before, we look ahead to tomorrow and we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. God given to us in the person of Jesus Christ. We celebrate the fact that in response to our deep and burning questions, in response to, to our situations of desperate need and desperate longing, God has not given us answers as much as he has given us himself. When we're living here in the day before, when we feel like someone else is always calling the shots, and we wonder when we'll ever get ahead, when we get discouraged and feel like God is silent in the middle of our difficulties, when we find ourselves longing for something more that just doesn't seem to come, or perhaps it comes in ways that we don't expect, when we ask why things in our lives aren't unfolding the way we thought they would, God wants to be Emmanuel. God with us. He wants to come to us and give us all of himself and show us that he is all that we need. When we're living in the day before, when we feel like every day is just like the last one and nothing ever changes, when we're looked down upon by 
others and put it down again and again so that our, our self-esteem is in tatters. When we have this restless feeling that we're made for something more, but nothing, nothing that happens in this life seems to provide an opening to discover what that something more is. When we feel like we have no purpose, God wants to be an animal. God with us. He wants to come to us and give him himself. Give us himself. And show us that he is all we need. When we're living in the day before, when the challenges and difficulties of life overwhelm us and seem more than we can handle, when we've seen God work in the past and we have faith in him, and yet we have a hard time seeing God how he's going to work in this situation, when, as much as we work to hang on to our faith, life still brings with it feelings of apprehension and anxiety and fear. God wants to be Emmanuel, God with us. He wants to come to us and give, him, give us all of himself and show us that he is all we need. We can feel like we're living constantly in the day before. With all the tedium and discouragement and longing and uncertainty and fear that it can bring. And it can be very difficult to deal with all of that if we fail to remember that we are living the day before. For after the day before is the day. The day when everything changed. And tomorrow we will celebrate with all our hearts and we will remember that he has entered into our lives as we've opened ourselves up to him. And he has begun to make a difference. And he has begun to make all things new. And just like the Jewish people, and just like the shepherds, and just like Mary and Joseph, in response to all the troubles of the day before, God, Emmanuel, gives us himself. And we come to realize that is enough. That even if even if all of our questions aren't answered, that is enough. He has given us Himself. And that is all we need. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you that at Christmas we celebrate the fact that you have given us yourself. Your Son Jesus Christ, fully God. Fully human. And by your Holy Spirit, you've given us all of yourself. You made available all of yourself right now. And Lord, I just pray whatever we're going through, whatever questions we want answers to, whatever longings are in our hearts, whatever it feels like for us living in the day before, where it's hard to see the future. Help us to know, Lord, we have a shadow of a doubt. The truth of Christmas. You have given us yourself. You will never leave us nor forsake us. You will be our strength. You are all we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's a tradition in the church to end service this Sunday night. You all have candles that you need? So here's the thing. We're going to move so that we end up in service. On the other side of the church and down the back. You may not be enough people to come all the way in front and make it cut into an aisle a few rows back. So let's stand together, masks on, and stay in a circle. And as one person lights the candle, pass the light along.
spent here in the night the day before. Let's prepare tomorrow to celebrate the day. The day when you came and everything changed. And wherever you are today, in this day before in your life, just know that he wants to come. And be Emmanuel, God with you. And begin the process to make everything change. May God bless you tomorrow with your families. Christmas is about service and giving to others, and in about four and a half minutes, <laughs> those of you who like to come Christmas caroling with us, we're going to hop cars and Pinot Fair Fire Crossing. Ruth has the carol sheets. Just come and join us. And if you're not able to, feel free to hang around here or take off and get on with your Christmas Eve. So, God bless you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.